In recent years, the Philippines' economy has grown at one of the quickest rates in the region. The economy is one of the best growing in East Asia, according to the World Bank, thanks to high exports, strong domestic consumption, and infrastructure spending. Furthermore, it's anticipated that the government's commitment to raising public infrastructure spending will maintain the nation's growth momentum and boost consumer and corporate confidence. So get ready because in this video, we'll take you through the facts and reasons why the Philippines are successful and we'll tell you how their geography is challenging their economy. The Philippines' economy grew at its fastest rate since 1976, in part due to a robust recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic in 2022. In 2022, the Philippines' 7.6% GDP growth rate was on par with some of the fastest-growing large emerging markets globally, such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, two countries that export oil to the Gulf Cooperation Council and other rapidly expanding Asian emerging economies like Malaysia, Vietnam, and India. Over the past 10 years, the Philippines has similarly demonstrated significantly better economic growth, with the exception of the COVID-19 pandemic's peak time in 2020 and 2021, when there was an international upheaval to economic activity. Between 2012 and 2019, the Philippines' real GDP grew by 6 to 7 percent year on average. Real economic growth reached its fastest level since 1976 and 2022 thanks to the economic recovery. Household final consumption expenditure increased by 8.3% year-over-year, while gross capital formation increased by 16.8% year-over-year. So what factors make the Philippines a promising market? First, it has an exceptional English-speaking workforce. In fact, when it comes to labor quality, the Filipino workforce has a distinct advantage over that of any other Asian nation. The Philippines offers an ample supply of highly trained and trainable labor to meet any fundamental business demand namely professional, technical, management, and qualified employees with a literacy rate of 94.6%. The broad English proficiency of the Filipino workforce is its primary competitive advantage. Since all schools teach English, the Philippines is the third largest English-speaking nation in the entire globe. Second, it's an ideal site for business. Situated in the center of Asia, the Philippines has become a popular destination for investments and a good starting point for initiatives aimed at expanding across the Asia-Pacific region. It's a vital entrance point for more than 500 million people in the Asian market and is situated four hours flight time on average from the region's major capitals. Third, the government there has implemented prudent macroeconomic measures. Significant legislative measures that the government has issued and put into effect would aid in the Philippine economy's continued expansion. A comprehensive tax reform program, for example, guarantees a consistent flow of funding for the government's ambitious infrastructure program, and the reduction of the personal income tax is anticipated to increase consumer spending and stimulate the economy. Meanwhile, by enhancing the effectiveness and transparency of all governmental processes, the Ease of Doing Business Act seeks to further combat bureaucratic red tape. Despite such economic success and business attractiveness, it seems like something is holding back the Philippines. So let's tackle why it's considered to be doomed by its geography. The Philippines is a country in Southeast Asia that's located around 500 miles east of Vietnam. The country is composed of about 7,000 islands, though at high tide the precise number of islands above sea level may vary. The bulk of the nation is made up of mountains and coastal plains with 36,289 kilometers of shoreline. It also features numerous waterfalls, jungles, river systems, ocean trenches, and volcanoes. The Philippine Trench, an extensive and constricted dip in the ocean floor, borders Mindanao's east coast. Inside the Philippine Trench, the Galatea depth lies 10.54 kilometers below sea level, making it the third deepest place on Earth. The Banaue rice terraces are now listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. These terraces were carved out of the mountainside more than 2,000 years ago and irrigation systems were put in place on them. They resemble stairs and total more than 12,500 miles in length. Maria Cristina Falls is located in Iligan City, and they're more than 300 feet above the forest canopy. It's sometimes called the Twin Falls because a boulder splits the tumbling water into two distinct streams. Another waterfall in the Philippines is called Tinuya Falls, or the Little Niagara of the Philippines. But wait a second, how many islands are there? It was believed that the Philippines consisted of 7,107 islands until 2016. 
However, using interferometric synthetic aperture radar, the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority of the Philippines discovered 500 more islands in 2016. Luzon is the largest of the more than 7,000 islands that comprise the Philippines, covering an area of more than 105,000 square kilometers. You heard right, the Philippines is home to lush jungles and coral reefs. The Philippines lies inside the Pacific Ring of Fire because it's situated at a major tectonic plate boundary, where numerous tectonic plates collide and interact. Frequent earthquakes and volcanic activity in the region are caused by the movement and collision of these plates. In addition, because the Philippines are situated in a region with a high seismic activity, they're especially susceptible to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Ring of Fire, often referred to as the Pacific Ring of Fire or the Circum-Pacific Band, is a wide horseshoe-shaped band of strong seismic activity that encircles the Pacific Basin. It's made up of volcanoes, tectonic plate borders, and earthquake epicenters. For the most part, the 40,000 kilometers long belt is made up of a network of island arcs. Volcanoes run throughout the entire length of the belt, and that's why it's called the Ring of Fire. On the oceanic side, the belt has been organized by several deep ocean troughs, while behind it are continental landmasses. More than 75% of all volcanoes worldwide, the bulk of the world's largest earthquakes, and the most number of earthquakes all occur inside the Ring of Fire. Because of their location in the Northwest Pacific, Meteorologists claim that the Philippines are squarely in the course of the greatest common typhoon generator in the entire globe. The Philippines is often battered by typhoons. At least 20 storms a year make landfall there. Time magazine declared the country to be the most exposed country in the world to tropical storms in 2013. The Philippines has many risks and worries from typhoons and other extreme weather events, and the situation is expected to worsen due to climate change. Towards the end of 2021, a Category 5 super typhoon slammed the Philippines, destroying seven provinces on two critical days. The situation affected almost 8 million Filipinos, many of whom were left without access to clean water or food, as well as being homeless or displaced. Each year, this archipelago is hit by 20 exceptionally strong tropical storms that bring high levels of rainfall and devastating floods. The Philippines never sleeps after a tropical storm. Lower-class homes with more fragile infrastructures are most affected, particularly those close to the coast where severe weather is more often. A year later, you may trace Odette's damaged trail and meet some of the victims who continue to heal and prepare for the next hit. How does this unlucky geography constitute a challenge for the economy of the Philippines? The Philippines' economic growth record has fallen behind of several of its peers in East and Southeast Asia during the past few years. The country outperformed Thailand, Indonesia, and the People's Republic of China in the 1950s and 1960s, having one of the highest per capita GDPs in the region. However, the Philippines is currently falling behind. Its expansion has been slow, erratic, and characterized by recurrent booms and busts. As a result, family incomes have not improved significantly, inequality has risen, and the rate of poverty has gradually diminished. These patterns frequently act as an indication of the issues that the Philippines is facing in this new century. Let's see an in-depth example. Disasters befell the economy as it entered the 1990s. The Philippines' central and northern regions were severely devastated by a large earthquake in 1990, and Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991. The immense destruction caused by the volcano resulted in a contraction that year. 1992 saw the conducting of presidential elections, but there was a significant electrical problem that needed to be resolved before the new leadership could begin working on its strategy for growth. The economy was able to solidify its restoration after the crisis was ended in 1994, up until the 1997 eruption of the Asian financial crisis. The Philippines became entangled in the period of crisis. There was another recession in 1998, the year of the presidential election. The constriction was only momentary. In 1999, the economy expanded again. The recuperation continued until a second political upheaval in late 2000 when the outgoing president resigned and a new government took office in January 2001. It's instantly apparent by looking at the map how varied the topography is in the Philippines. The country's tourism promotion initiatives emphasize its 7,100 islands, but they also draw attention to a more complex reality. The nation, which is home to almost 90 million people, is incredibly diversified in terms of geography, ecology, natural resource endowments, economics, ethnicity, and culture. After Indonesia, it is the second largest archipelagic state in the world. International trade is becoming a bigger source of fuel for local development. 
These regions' ability to connect to the World Economic Development Engine is largely dependent on the availability of ports, airports, and telecommunications. For example, free trade zones have contributed almost entirely to the increase in Philippine exports since 1990. Consequently, one of the most important factors influencing regional dynamics is the placement of these zones and the infrastructure that supports them. As a result, the Philippines economy has an extremely positive prognosis for the next 10 years, with considerable advancements in economic development anticipated. According to the Philippine government's Family Income and Expenditure Survey from 2021, 20 million people, roughly 18.1% of the country's total population, continue to live below the poverty line. Strong improvements in human development indices will be supported by rapidly increasing per capita GDP and living standards, which should also result in a notable decline in the proportion of the population living in extreme poverty during the next 10 years. Did you find this video interesting? If so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to receive more of our interesting videos and watch the latest video.